A small donation to the League Against Cruel Sports could save this fox cub from a future of fear and suffering, claims a post on its Facebook page. Exploiting emotions to extract money and urging swift action is common in charity adverts, as if your fast response could avert a catastrophe. What this appeal is basically saying is pay up or the animal dies. But no matter how quickly lax supporters donate money to save this cute little red fox, it won't guarantee the animal lives its life in peace, as the post promises. One of the reasons is because the fox, if it is still alive, lives in the United States, well out of the league's reach. The charity used a photo taken by this man, who lives in New Jersey, but snaps wildlife in national parks across the US, then sells them online. Some donors may consider that misleading. They may also be troubled to hear most of Lax's spending, according to its 2018 annual report, is not on what many would consider directly helping wildlife. Lax spent roughly three million on what they consider charitable activities, of which only 9% or 274,000 are what you and I would call actual animal conservation programs. Richard Taylor is an investor in EdTech who spends a lot of his time picking apart the accounts of charities as part of his forensic due diligence. Charities like Lax, he says, spend millions on political lobbying and campaigning for more money. Most of the rest of the money went on campaigning and lobbying, so you could argue that most small to medium-sized animal welfare charities are mainly campaigning and lobbying groups. They're not delivering animal welfare as you or I or most normal people, a reasonable person, would describe it. Even what some of the bigger charities say is not always what they do. I mean, I, I think having animal welfare charities is great if they do good animal welfare work, but it seems to me a lot of what I see being done is not delivering animal welfare, it's lobbying for legislative changes. And some of that is probably quite valid, but some of it is probably not what donors really expect. Another dubious but common practice is animal charities offering free will writing services, hoping people will leave them some cash when they die. The Hunt Saboteurs Association recently sparked outrage by appealing to frail or elderly supporters to leave it money if coronavirus kills them. The reason they do it is it's one of the cheaper ways to raise, in terms of bang for bucks, you get quite a lot out of it. This is little Torb. Oh. He is the little devil of Maxie's. <laughs> He's a bit of a biter. He's a red dog. Yeah. <laughs> this is how charities should operate. Maxie's mates near Gisborne in Cleveland may be broadly anti-shooting and anti-hunting, but it says it rehomes dogs, and that's what it does. We tend to get left with the dogs that really need help, the dogs with issues, uh, like Panda. Um, he needs a single owner, someone who's experienced. Homes like that don't come along anytime soon. Maxie's mates staff care about their animals and are doing their best to find them permanent homes. They oppose killing animals, apart from the ones that feed their dogs, of course. Right now, times are tough with the coronavirus lockdown. When we adopt dogs, we need to do home checks. So we rely heavily on volunteers to do home checks. Um, because people are self-isolating, we can't get to the homes. We have to rely heavily on now on uh, volunteers coming up. We're asking for experienced workers. I, I think the current situation will have an enormous impact on charities of all sizes. So, say 100,000 people who are members of a charity stop donating during this, this current crisis. The question is how many of them will start re-donating once it's over and I would imagine it's only going to be a proportion, maybe 75% but quite possibly less. I would imagine the current circumstances you would need at least six months of reserves probably to, to still be in business in a, in a year's time. While some charities are sitting on millions of pounds in the bank, and flooding TV screens with heart-wrenching ads calling for your cash. Shelters like Maxie's Mates, who rely on volunteers and the kindness of supporters, are facing a bleak future if the current health scare carries on much longer. So in two months' time, we might have no money left whatsoever, hardly any staff or volunteers because everybody's self-isolated. And then what happens to the dogs? 